Oi, 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 guys, what's up? Tech Hobbies back here again. Um, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is an Android login with my SQL and PHP. Um, if you watched my previous tutorial, I did a video on Android login with SQLite and shared preferences. But this time around, it's going to be with my SQL and PHP. Uh, so, what you need to know is that we are going to be connecting our Android application to um, a local host or a server whereby our server will be our computer so what you need to do is you need to have a couple of tools you are going to use to do this so let me just get started let's just get started right now um, what I'm going to use for the PHP aspect is uh, USB web server that's like the host we are going to be using you can use ZAMP or WAMP but I think we should settle on USB web server that's this one it doesn't require any installation or whatsoever you can just google it and check it out and download it it's pretty fast and simple to use so the first thing we need to do now is we need to get our files our PHP files so if you have already installed a USB if you already am um, download a USB web server you can go on to place it wherever you want to after downloading it you get these files and then we are going to we need to put it we need to put the PHP files in the root folder in the root directory. So in the root directory we are going to create a folder. I created a folder under login MySQL. That's where we are going to put our PHP files. So the first directory we are going to create in the under login MySQL is an include folder. So in that include folder we need to have two PHP files right there. A db connection does a db connection of php file and a db function of php so the db connection of php file is going to have your connection string configuration that's where you have the constants in order to connect your database so if you are familiar with php you will see that we have defined a, co a number of constants we have defined the db host the DB user, the DB password, and the DB database. So for our DB host, we have local host since we are logged on the machine. We have um, roots for our DB user, we have USB for our password and Android underscore login. These are this username and password are the default um, configuration for USB web server. Maybe example, example might come example on one might come with different user email password or you can even change it according to what you want. So we define our connection string here. We initialize it to a variable connection equal to MySQL underscore connect. And it has four parameters the DB host, the DB user, the DB password, and our DB database. So we are going to check we're going to try to connect the database so if we do that here if mysql underscore connect underscore error number that means database connection failed right so you just need to get this into your db connection as php file the next file under my under the include folder is db underscore functions this is where we are going to add a user try and log in and then also check yeah just those two basic functionalities so for the first line we need to require the db connection it's just like using an import in java but this time we're using require one since it's php so you are calling the file name from the include folder that's where you can see here includes includes slash db connection of php and then the function store user. Then 
think you guys should be quite familiar with this or if not you can just copy the code here so this function is for inserting the user into the database and then this function is for signing in so that you sign in by getting the user the user's email and password check whether it's already existing in the system and then this function is for checking if the email already exists so right here we are not going to be encrypting our password we are just going to leave it as raw text um, now that you have got this here I want you guys to open your browser and uh, we are going to we are going to our local host we need to open the PHP admin and create our database so my username is root my password is usbw you can even see it here right here so usbw go so what you're going to do next is you need to create uh, you need to create the database I've already created mine but let me just show you how to do it fast with code the first thing you need to do is create a database create database android underscore login you can name yours anything you want and then you want to use the database so use database android underscore login and then we create a table create table users the table is known as users and then we give it an id integer 11 primary key auto increments auto increments right okay and we need a um, username baka 50 unique and the same goes for the email baka to 70 unique and then our password back uh, 60 not now so once you're done with this you can just create it um, I'm going to give you an error because I've already created it so if you see something like this after you're done creating your database and your tables if you have this structure id username email and password as you can see right here so if you're done with that let's head straight to uh, where do you go next? Where do you go next? Where do you go? Let's test our API that we just wrote. So, uh, if you have Google Chrome, I'll like you to open the Google Chrome. There's an app known as Postman that allows you to send requests to a server. Yeah, so um, what we're going to do next is we need to create two more files for login and register. So we do that here. Create a login file, the login as PHP file. Then the first thing you need to, we are going to write is you need to include the DB functions as PHP because that's what we are going. That's where we are going to derive the store user and get user by email and password so, so right here we create a response array and we initialize it to give a first variable it's an associative array with the first value as false and then we check for the email and password whether we have set the email and password if we've not set the email and password yeah we need to we need to get an error that the parameters are missing so after we set 
check the setting and the password we get username and password you get a user's email and password from on this this line here so this is where the user enters his email and password so if the user exists if the user is found we are going to retrieve those values we're going to retrieve the user's id his email his username and oh looks like there are two errors that duplicate here so after that we encode this in the json you're going to see how it looks like in the json format and if the user doesn't exist we're going to get an error that's okay wrong email or password printed so you guys can also copy this code right here um, do the same for register actually just the same just that when the registry we take the username we take the email and take the password so before the user registers we check whether the email exists if it doesn't exist if it exists we say email already exists so the user is not allowed to register since this email is already in the system and there's an existing email in the system then from there we if it doesn't exist we store the user and then retrieve the values of the user into a json format so here you can see the code okay so what we're going to do next is um, open your chrome browser download postman that's what we're going to use to send requests to our api and see whether our api is working correctly mm. okay so i have my postman loaded here what i'm going to do is uh, enter the parameters right I'm, I'm going to create a new user right here let me stop this connectify i'm going to create a new user right here so uh, i need a user's email okay i need a user username let me say frank i need a, this email so frank at gmail.com i need his password the password is one two three four five send so i didn't have any error and this is how the json format looks like so you can see i have no error it was false i received the user the, the user details that is id his email and his username so now let's let me try and log in with these details so login with login i don't need i need the user the user's email and password i don't need the username so i'm going to take this out I'll try and log in and see so i was able to log in and retrieve bodies as well so now we are set to move on to an android application let me just open it right here from where we need we need to log in we will have to use um volley volley is a library that we are going to be using to send requests to the server and retrieve requests from the server so the first thing you need to do is you need to add this line of code to your build a griddle file you have to build a griddle file so make sure you choose the one which has the model colon app in brackets that's your application build a griddle not your previous build a griddle so make sure you choose your application build a griddle and add this line of code um to the dependencies your android version might be different your android studio version might be different from mine but you should you should be able to see that um it will be around uh, it will be around this side as well yeah you see just look for that's where you see from the android or support that's app version app compact and then add um Android at volley colon volley 1.0.0. .0. 
after you're done adding that i'll advise you add your internet permissions as well which is here so under the permissions internet and then the next thing you have to do is uh, you need to add this android login controller to your package so this android login controller is what has the volley the volley um, core objects so with, with volley we need to have a request queue and we need to have a request queue to be able to send a request so since it's a single thing class we have an instance which is in here on your in your grid we also you can also get an instance right here we can get a request queue we can add to request queue so this one has a request and attack this one has just a request so we can cancel any request so we need to have this added to your application and then what you need to do is go back to your Android manifest and then under the application tag you need to add Android colon name and mention the class which has the volley core objects so that's Android login controller right here if you forget to add this your app is going to crash so you need to make sure to add this so next thing you have to look at is uh, our main activity uh, sign up and our login so when I created the application the first thing that came was main activity but I wanted to look at the login so create an, an activity called login with this create an activity called login and then um, add it's simple to set up your layouts file for the login activity just need to add an email edit text a part of password edit text the login button and the sign up text view so we have the code right here the next thing you have to do is go back to your login class and then introduce your or initialize your edit text or declare declare and initialize your edit text and button variables just do this one this three i want us to do something before we get back here so create a package preference package and create two classes a user info and a user session class user session class is what you are going to use to store our session when the user logs in so the next time we go back to the app and open the application it's not going to go back to the login page it's going to go straight to the main activity page so we are user session class we have a tag we have the preference name which is login we have the a key which is which is like a boolean value and we have the um, shared preference variable the editor and the context so um, this is where you initialize everything this is in a constructor so when you just declare a user session it's going to initialize all this at once and then when the user logs in we're just going to set this login to be true so that's where you put a boolean so when the user logs in it's going to be true when and with this function we're going to get we're going to check whether the user is logged in or not so we're going to get a boolean and then the false value we are setting for this is false in case the user has logged in or not we're going to just set a default value, a default value of false uh, and the next thing we're going to do is a user info user info class is responsible for taking care of the user data when he logs in or not so in this case user logs in we store his details in the user info class going to do is <coughs> just like the user session class we declare a constructor with a context we declare a method where we set the username and 
so the, the email of the user we also declare a method to clear the user info we get a user we get a username and a user email from the strings from this method where is necessary so right here we are getting the email of the user and this is a default string in case there's no email there so that your application has a crash let's go back to our login activity we need a progress dialog that is going to show up when we are logging in it's like a background process and then we need the, we need the user session and user info so we, we initialize all what are my edit text and our text views and all that and then we set we create a write an if statement to check whether the user is logged in so if the user is logged in we send the user straight to the main activity class and then we close this activity and this is where it sets on click listeners so um this is a method for the login which requires our email and our password so this is where we are going to use the volley we first um, um declare a string request tag we we set our message for a progress dialog we show we show it from there and then this string request is where we are going to request um for the login details so we we, we get these various methods these various methods are we're, we're reading on response on error response and the last one we get parameters so on response we have a tag here this tag returns the json file the json string that's that's what we get here you get right exactly this from this line of code and then we have our json objects j objects which is error so this is our json object error right here so we check if error is false that means you can also return uh, another json object so we have two json objects right here we have error and we have user so user has each user json object has a um, number of Variable drive is tracy variables variables one the id email and username so i i just want to take the username and the email so that's what i do here so after i'm able to retrieve it from the server i just store them in my shared preference file which is user info i store the email and the username and also i, I set the session to log in uh, the next time the user opens the application so it's going to go straight to the main activity and after that i just start the main activity and I close the activity so if i receive an error i'm just going to take close the error on the on the screen and this is also a try and catch statement so in case there's an error in the catch statement it's going to close on the screen um same goes for here on error response if the application couldn't connect to the server whatsoever it's going to show this error response and then hide the progress dialog so this um, method is really necessary because this one we are going to use to post send the post request to the server so we right here we send the email and password to the server and then last but not the least we add the request to the request field so that's what you see right here and then we're done so i wrote a toast method so that instead of i don't need to write toast method i don't need to write a toast um statements more than three times just a simple way okay so um this is uh this is the ID for our login button and
the ID for our text view. So we take the username, you take the user's email and password from our edit text fields and then we pass them to the login method. What you see here. And with the sign up, we just open a new activity. If you sign up. So now that we're done here, the next thing we do is oh I forgot to mention something. Right here you have the login URL. So we need to create a utils class which will um, consist of the login URL. So let's just go right to the utils class. Um, in utils class, we have our base IP, our login URL, and our register URL. So with the base IP, this is where you enter the IP address of your computer. So um, you can do that by Control R, a Windows key and R type cmd you type ip config so this ip address is what you're going to enter right here and together with the ports you need to record the ports or you might get an error here so with the login url um i have the login of php file located under my android login with my sql directory that's right here so you can see I'm really logging my SQL. Same goes for register URL. So we are done with this part. Um, we need to go to sign up. The sign up takes just the same, it just does the same thing. Um, so with the sign up, you can just copy the variables from the user session and um, the login class to this side. And I forgot to show you my sign up. So the sign up we have in the sign up we have edit text for username, email and password. And also a sign up button. So this is just pretty simple stuff. You can just declare the number of these and then initialize it in the sign up class. So once you're done, you see right here an email and password button sign up progress dialog user session user info so with the sign up i'm going to use the same method i did i'm going to just do the same thing i did under the volley class just that i'm going to change my url under the login class i'm just going to change my url so register underscore url and then i'm going also going to change my parameters username email and password and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little change here. And when the user signs up, I'm going to set his email and username. I think I did the same thing in the login. So I think here, yeah, that's just it. And then I also have my toast method here. So with the sign up, I take my username, email, and password from the various text fields. I trim and every, everything, and I just assign it to this method. So I've declared all my session variables and my user info, and that's that. So the next thing I need to do is go to the main activity. So my main activity is just a simple activity, which looks like this. So main activity is just going to display your username and your email, and then a log a logout button. So it's just going to display them in text text views, which I have here. So um, right here you can see that. I've declared my text views and my buttons and also the user info user session classes. I initialize all of them here and then I check whether I check with the user session whether it's what the user has logged in. If the user hasn't logged in, it should take me back to the login class. And then I retrieve the values of the user email from the user info. You, you, you can remember that I set them when I uh, when I logged in so I retrieve them from the user info right here and I set them to the text views 
right here. And we did our load class button. I just set the log into false. So next time it opens, it's gonna see his login as easy. Then I clear the user info. So I clear the username and the email. And then uh, my close this activity and start a new activity and start the login activity right here. Um, so I think I've got everything right here. Login, main activity, sign up, details, user info, user session. So once you're done, you should test your application, run your application and see. So as you can see, I've already logged in, so it's showing my username and my email. So let me just log out. Okay, so um, since I'm a new user, I'm going to sign up. Uh, his username is Fiona. Email Fiona at gmail.com. Password Fiona. Okay, sign up. Okay, so I sign up. So when I sign up, that means I'm going to get logged in as well. So you can see that if you don't have signed up, her uh, email is you know, gmail.com. But let me just close the activity and then open it again. So you see, it takes you straight to the main activity because she's already logged in. So um, this is all for the tutorial on Android login with PHP and MySQL. Um, I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any issues, feel free to comment below. Um, make sure you subscribe for other interesting and cool videos to be posted soon. See you guys later. I mean, yeah. Peace out.